Welcome back to the lab, folks. In my last video, I, I briefly showed you this and, and uh, asked if anybody was interested in having a look at it. And uh, a, a bunch of you were. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you this little load uh, today. So it is, a, a, it is an electronic load. It's, uh, it's good for about 30 watts. So it's, it's not a, a big time load or anything like that. Now, according to the specifications of the device, it's just really just the module here. Uh, according to the specifications of it, it's good for 0 to 30 amps and 0 to 5 amps in the measurement with a maximum of 30 watts. And they did, they did put in the listing for it. On, I got mine off of Amazon. And I see the same, the same on AliExpress where it says, don't put a super power on it. I, I don't know really what they mean by that. Um, power is controlled by whatever you put into it. If you exceed the 30 volts and the 5 amps, I guess... It's not going to be very good. Now it's got under voltage protection, which is great for, for looking at batteries to see what kind of uh, energy that they contain. So if you put a lithium battery on it, you want to kind of put the cutout voltage. So when the voltage of the battery gets down to whatever it is, maybe 2.7 volts or so, you want it to stop loading the battery at that point in time and there, cut it off. You don't want to destroy the battery or your house in the process. And it's got overpower protection, which kind of makes their statement about using superpower kind of strange. And the fan on it, it's got a fan on the back, but it's got a heat sink on the MOSFET, the main MOSFET. And it's got a big heat sink on that, and then it's got a fan attached to that. And it's temperature controlled. So when you're just using it at a low wattage, it doesn't, the fan doesn't come on. The fan only comes on once the temperature of the module gets up to 40 degrees or more, 45 degrees, something like that. And then the fan comes on, cools it down, so the fan will cycle on and off. If you're running it up around about 25, 30 watts, it fan tends to stay on all the time. And I believe it's got uh, thermal protection. If the module gets over 75 degrees, it just shuts down. So it's it's fairly well designed. It works it works really, really well. So um, before I get into it and show you what's inside and how I implemented it, this is basically what it is. So the module comes with a, a battery plus and minus input. They're fairly obvious. And it's got a sense plus and minus. On my module, these are shown as a, as a smaller B plus and minus, but they are sense inputs. So what they show you in their default circuit is you just connect this to this and this to this and go about your merry life. But what I did is I brought them out to a switch here, the switch here. So I brought the sense out to the switch here and I can switch between this set of posts for the sense or bring them over here to the input side. So basically in this position here, you have four wires. You can bring a, a you know, set of cables out to sense at the, at the battery or at the device that you're putting under load. And you can bring these ones here will carry the load. These ones here will detect the voltage. So you get a more accurate reading of the device under test, whether it be a battery or some other little power supply or something of that nature. Its own supply voltage is anywhere from six to 30 volts DC. So what I did is I threw together a little unregulated power supply. Now if it's got six to 30 volts, it's obviously got its own regulator built into it. So I didn't have to put a regulator on the little power supply. It's just a transformer, bridge rectifier, um, capacitors in here. And I just uh, paralleled a bunch of them together. They're all 1000 UF, so it's a total of 3000 UF. So let's uh, let's get into it and, and show you how I did it and mention some other things if you wanted to build one of these. Now these, I think these modules run around about, I think I paid $36 for mine, or 36 and change, maybe call it $37 Canadian. So that would uh, that'd be about $30 US, um, but let's get into it. All right, so this is, uh, this is basically how it looks here. So here's the, here's the module right there. There's uh, my bridge rectifier and capacitors, and there's the transformer. So anyway, I just got it, it comes in, power comes in here, goes through a switch, goes into the transformer, and then the filter DC comes into the device itself. And this is where I've wired up the switch here like this. So let me, let me show you something else about this. Like this module is, is, is really well done. Here's, here's the fan on the back of it. The fan plugs into the, the board here. And it mine came with these, this connector here. So it's, it's like a terminal strip, but it's a connector as well. That's how you make the connections to it. And it's, it's, it's really nice that, in that respect. 
And another thing I should tell you about it, like when you cut the hole for the device, like you measure it out and you cut the hole for it, you need to take the whole back end of it off because the heat sink is actually a little bit larger than the device itself. But that's no problem because the, the device is built with two boards that, can, that have these little header interconnects here. So this can be removed fairly easily for installation of the front part, which has got the controls on it. So this whole thing can be removed. So this is, this is the, the part that does the dissipation of the power. And then you can see down in there, I don't, yeah, you can see down in there, there's the control board, which does the display and everything. And that'll just slide in and clip in place, and then you just slide this back into it. And uh, well, that's it. So it altogether, it makes up this nice little DC load. And it has specific features for, you know, looking at batteries, such as the, you know, the under voltage protection, which is a very nice feature for looking at batteries. Uh, no matter what battery you have, that you want to put on it, whether it be a lead acid battery, a lithium battery, a nickel cadmium or a nickel metal hydride battery, you don't want, ever want to bring the voltage down to zero because basically that just means that you've just destroyed the battery. So in any of those cases, it's good to have that, that under voltage protection, which it does have. So let me get this all back together again and I'll fire it up. And what I want to do with it today, I have uh, 5.5 volt super capacitor. So I'm going to pop one on here and we're going to test it. So let me get this all back together and set up for that. All right, folks, we got it all back together again here. I got it up on some blocks on this box here so you can see it better. And uh, well, let's let's turn it on so you can have a look. So this is uh, one of the two user interfaces. So it looks like a battery and yeah, I, I prefer this another one here. I prefer this one here. It just provides me with information in a way that I can assimilate it more quickly. Now, what we want to do here, we want to set this up. So I've got this 10 fired capacitor here. It's all charged up to five volts. And we're going to test it on this. And we're going to test it to see how good this is. Is it really 10 fires or not? So yeah, we can use this little load here to test that. And what we want to do, we're going to set here to set it up. So it's it's already set here for 200 milliamps, which is what I'm going to drain it at. I've set the, the next thing down here is the voltage low. So that's the voltage that you would get the thing to stop at. So if you're doing a like a lithium ion cell, you might set that to 2.7 volts or something like that. So it'll stop discharging at that point. And the OPP is the power protection. So I've got it set here for 29 watts. We're not going to get 29 watts out of this, not 200 milliamps. And you can set uh, you can set a particular ID for this thing. So you can set the ID number two or number three or number four, and then you can store those results. You can store the, the actual amp hours and what hours you get. And we'll come out of there. And these watt hours and, and amp hours here, if you just press the, the P2 button here, press it for long, it zeroes them out. So you can always reuse a particular ID if you want. Um, this rotary knob here does the setting. Once you're in here doing the, in here setting it, you can set the values with this uh, little knob here. And like I say, you go down, and then if you're in a particular value, you can snap back and forth like that. And that's about it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this, because I've got these long uh, Kelvin leads here. They're really quite long. I think they're about two meters. So I'm going to put these in here. I'm going to put this into four wire mode and we'll uh, measure it using four wire mode. So put the Kelvin leads in and then I'll get these Kelvin clips here. I put them on the capacitor. And there it is. You can see it's reading 4.92 volts. So all we have to do now to put it under load is press. Let me get this stabilized here so it doesn't go anywhere for the duration of the test. I just press this button here and then I'll put it under load and we can measure the watt hours of it. So we'll let that run. We'll come back when it's finished and we'll do some simple calculations to find out whether or not this is indeed a 10 farad capacitor. Okay, folks, I think we can call it quits at this point. So let's look at the information we have here. So the, the actual real time was five minutes and uh, we got uh, 
0.013 amp hours out of it and a total energy of 0 0.035 watt hours. Uh, the actual uh, unit itself never went above 23 degrees C, so the fan didn't come on at all. And uh, that's it. So let's let's uh, have a look and see what that means as far as the uh, capacitance of this capacitor goes. Look at this formula here. The energy is equal to the voltage squared times the capacitance divided by 2, and that gives you the energy in joules. So the joules are watt seconds. So you'd have to take that and divide it by 3600 to get watt hours so we can match that reading there. So let's do that. So we got uh, we had a 5 volts. Five times five, and then we multiply it by the capacitance, which is ten, and then divide by two, and then divide that one twenty five. Oh, here one twenty five divided by thirty six hundred equals point zero three five. So 0 0.035, that's an exact match. So yeah, these uh, capacitors are good. And that's, you know, one little uh, example of what you can do with a little load like this. So I uh, verified, I got a good capacitor and my little load has come in handy again. So, okay, we've got some time, I think, for a couple of little bonus things. Um, so let's have a look at those. Let me, let me clear this off. So let me clear this off and then I want to show you something else. I don't know if you call the modified multifunction tester. I said I was going to make up some leads for it. Uh, I've made up one set of leads, and these these ones. Now they're not they're not only going to just be useful for this, but they'll be useful for other things. So I just shortened down some of those big long leads that I had to make them more practical for use with this. You know, where leads like this might come in handy is you know for measuring bigger devices like this or measuring devices that are mounted to something. So let's go ahead and, and look at this 2M3055 here and see how we do. So you just clip, doesn't matter which way you clip them on. Clip one lead on there, one on there, one on there, and hit test. And there we go. So we've got uh, an NPN, which is right. It's got a gain of 35. It's, uh, it's not great for 2M3055, but it's okay. And that's at a emitter current of 6.3 milliamps and a base emitter voltage of 0.585 volts. So yeah, that's one little update I had for you. Now another update I have, or just a mention I want to make, is this, this pad here. This is, uh, this is absolutely fantastic. I've been using this non-stop since I got it. It's just great for doing stuff like this that doesn't have to last a long time. You're not keeping it around. Of course, an ordinary notebook is better for something they're going to keep, but this is really handy for on the fly stuff. Now, one other thing I want to do. I got these fuses for my Simpson meter. These are the two amp fuses. And uh, a lot of people had said, uh, you know, those fuses might be cheap Chinese junk and might not be fuses at all. And I agree, they might not be. So let's test one of these. I'm not gonna test them all, because you'd end up with no fuses then, but let's test one of these. So it's, it's rated at two amps. It's supposed to be a fast blow fuse. So it should, um, it should not blow at two amps and it should blow within a second at four amps. So let's just try those two different levels there. All right, so here we are. Got the Brandon meter here set up. Got the power supply set up for two amps. Let's uh, verify that. That's two amps. And uh, let's now put this fuse in here. Let's see if I can bite onto that with there. And put this on here. Now let's keep it on here for about 10 seconds or so. Yeah, that's, that's, I think I said enough of a test. Okay, now let's set up the uh, power supply for four amps. Okay, that's close enough. Now this fuse should blow within a second if it's uh, if it's a good fast blow fuse. So let's see what it does. It's not blowing. Okay, that's not good. Let's uh, let's crank up the uh, amps a little more here. 
Let's see if we can get it up. I think the most I can get out of this is about 6.4, 6.16. Okay, will it blow at this? No, it's not blowing. So yeah, I uh, guess those guys who suggested that these might not be great fuses are right. So yeah, that's a fail. That is a dead fail there. Okay, um, didn't even get warm. Let me uh, let me crush it. See if it's even got sand in it. It is full of sand. So at least they got that part right. But wow. It's a copper wire in there. It looks very thin. It looks like it should blow. Okay, let's just clamp this piece of wire. Just wondering if, if the sand was kind of cooling the wire down. And that's taking a full six amps. I wish I could get more amps in this room right now. I can't, unfortunately. Definitely a fail. All right, folks. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.